Today, I'm going to share with you three things. Number one, do I need a great GPA? Meaning a GPA above 3.9 if it's on a four point scale or above nine if it's on a 10 point scale to do a master's or a PhD in the United States. Number two, what do I do if I have a bad GPA? And number three, I'll share with you something which was very motivating for me. So for the next part, if you want to skip it, it's okay because it's my intro or you can watch it in double speed. So hi friends, I'm Namrata. I'm a former master's student in the United States, married to a person who did his PhD in the United States. Before applying to the master's, I wish I knew so many things which nobody tells you. And so here I am to share those tips and tricks. I will post new videos every week. So before I answer the dreaded question, let us all understand the concept of GPA. So GPA is the cumulative average of scores or grades that you got in your undergrad or in your masters, which basically means it is a measure that tells about your academic performance throughout your college. So most US universities will ask for your GPA, your overall GPA, as well as your semester GPA, meaning what was your score or the average GPA that you got in your last semester of your college. So one more important thing to note here is that in US, most universities has a, have a four point scale, which means the highest GPA that you can get is four, Whereas in countries like India, the GPA is usually, the cumulative GPA is usually called CGPA and it's on a 10 point scale. So I'll make a separate video on it, on comparing US GPA scale and India GPA scale and how you can convert and all that. So don't worry. So let's move on. So do I need a great GPA to get accepted into a university or US university or an Ivy League? So the answer is no. I want to stress on one point here is that most times people are unmotivated thinking, oh, I won't get into the US university because I have a low GPA, you know. So at this point, I want to make it very clear that the application process for US universities is a package. Your GPA is just a part of it. It's not the final single determinant of your selection into the university. So again, I repeat, your GPA is just a part of it. All other parts, which I talked about in my previous video and I have linked it below, have more or less the equal, equal weightage in your application. So again do not think that if i don't have a great gpa there is no hope for me but however i would like to say that if you want to get into the let's say for example you if you want to get into the best master's program for computer science in the united states yes at that point they might want an ex excellent gpa but even then things are not black and white things are not like oh if you have it, you will get it. If you don't, you won't. In, in the US, the application process is not black and white, it's gray. Uh, so there is no harm in trying. So what do you do if you have a poor GPA? Number one, if GPA is your weakness, try to make the other things in your application your strengths. For example, do you have a great GRE GMAT score? Do you have a research paper published? Do you have a lot of work experience, like five years or so? Or did you get a national award or state award for even for an extracurricular activity? Focus on that. Number two, if you think that a semester GPA or something will stand out on your transcript, try to explain it in your SOP why that happened? Uh, did you, were you overwhelmed that it happened? Did you have a personal tragedy? Were you playing sports or any other, or you were doing any other activity for your college which hampered your studies? Uh, try to 
speak about that and explain the reason. However, I would want to stress that to not focus on it. Just maybe write a couple of sentences in your recipe. Focus on how you got back out of it, like how you got back to your feet, you know, how you focused on working towards improving your GPA. Focus on that rather than elaborating on the weakness. Number three, what matters most is that you show your sincere effort and you put it in sincere effort. So show that. Does your uh, transcript show an up upward trajectory? What did you do after college? Focus on that. The important fact is to show in your SOP that you can pick yourself up. Focus on that. Um, and I did that on my SOP and then I explained it and I focused on these things and this really helped. So moving on, lastly, I have a surprise, which is not a big surprise. Um, I wanted to share with you an anti-CV. Well, what is an anti-CV? So as you know, CV is usually a document that tells about how best you are. Basically, you're the star candidate. An anti-CV is just the opposite of that, showing your failures. So last year, I was having a very bad time and I was questioning myself, like, what did I do in my life? where I came across this anti-CV anti -CV, and I got very motivated. I'm going to share an anti-CV of a person who was a former, who used to work formerly for NASA and who's a theoretical physicist. Um, I'm very grateful to Dr. Tigran Karitsyan for letting me use his anti-CV. Uh, it was very funny to visit his website and see his achievements but then you see his anti-CV uh, I, I really got inspired a lot uh, you might get it too I have linked it below so please do visit it and let me know what you think about it uh, another reason I wanted to share this is that often we paint a very rosy picture of an accomplished person but Rarely we know about their failures. So I think it's important to know both the struggles and the achievements. And uh, yeah, so that, that was the reason. So the moral of this video is, if you have had a low GPA, don't beat yourself up. Uh, with that, we come to the end for today's video. If you have any questions or you would like me to discuss on some other topic, please comment below. If you liked what I shared, please subscribe to my channel and share with, with anyone who you think would be would benefit from it. Uh, thank you so much. See you next week with more tips and tricks. Thank you.